Hi, I'm Robert. The Real Life Hitch, leader and CEO of Look Care Matchmaking. You know, I always wondered if first dates and blind dates would have higher satisfaction if we ask better questions. So, I'm gonna put my hypothesis to the test. And I believe in popular culture, we should add just a dash of therapy. I feel like we'll have some more fun. So, welcome. This is Look Here TV, Wine Date Edition. I'm Cody, 25, born and raised in Portland, Oregon, live in Vancouver, Washington, and I'm just excited for this experience to see what happens next. Uh, so, my name is Sophia, I am 23 years old. I grew up here in a city outside of Portland called Sherwood, um, and I'm here to find a date. Why did you choose of those categories? Uh, okay, so I chose mental wellness, dating history, and dating scenario. Um, mostly due to, you know, past situations that could have been avoided had I known these things. So, yeah. I chose mental, mental wellness because I feel like it's very important, especially in today's world with social media being a big influence in our mindsets. I just want to make sure someone's mentally okay to take that next step in terms of relationships. And then I chose appearance. I want to know what's more important, physical or emotional appearance. Um, obviously for me, and for a lot of people, physical is always the first impression, but what do you look for most when you're trying to find somebody, find love? So that's why I picked that as well. And then dating scenarios. Sometimes it can be very awkward. Um, it could be a bar, club, casino, uh, birthday party. So just those opportunities, how does that pan out? So dating scenario. So I think the person who invited the other should pay on the first date. If a second date is one that the other person should pay, this is the way I think it should be. But at the end of the day, a date is you trying to win me over and butter me up. So I'll always prefer the guy to pay or at least offer, especially if they make more than me. I can understand that. Um, I agree on the first part where whoever invited that person should pay just because they're showing interest. Um, I don't really think it matters who gets paid more because then that could be a pretty big issue down the line. The question first and then it should be answered. Okay, mental wellness. How would you create an emotionally safe environment for me? And he said, I create an emotionally safe environment that would have no judgment, no judgment equals no walls. Okay, next. And why did you make that face? Um, <laughs> because, um, because it's a very simple answer. It's like a very loaded question with a very simple answer, you know? So it's kind of funny. Next one, um, dating history. The question is, what's the longest relationship you've been in? What did you learn from being in that relationship? And he said, six months. I learned a lot about myself more than anything else. True. Why are you guys laughing? You can't. Last one, the dating scenario. On the first date, who should pay and tip? And he said, I think guys should pay, but females tip. Okay, fair. When I answered these, they were much longer answers. picture of her feet. <laughs> I like the plan in the sky, it's pretty, she set that one up right there. So I know you select, selected appearance and you got a picture of her feet. Um, does she have nice feet? It's kind of hard to tell. Um, <laughs> good, I guess. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> we'll go to the next one. <laughs> how would create an emotional safe environment? How to create an emotional safe environment for your partner? I would put a lot of effort into listening and being vulnerable myself so that they feel comfortable sharing whatever they need. I think that answer is spot on. If you can't trust someone you're talking to, especially when you're trying to commit to somebody, that creates a lot of trust issues in the beginning. Um, just being honest with that person right away, I think that's a big key for it as well. So with all of those questions answered beforehand, do you feel like you have a good idea of who you're going to go on a date with? I think so. I mean, besides the toes, but uh, <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> so, knowing, these, knowing this bit of information, what do you feel, uh, do you feel like you know who you're going on a date with? Not at all, but... Do you feel like you have a better idea? Well, yeah. I have some hints. And what are those hints? Um, you know, doesn't judge. Um, maybe, maybe, uh, uses minimal wording, language. Not super communicative. <laughs> communicative. Um, sounds like... Redeeming <laughs> that. That wasn't me who said that, by the way. Um, and I remember what the last thing was, dating scenario. Oh, and, and maybe, maybe equality is important to him, so hopefully it's important to me too. So. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, you're ready for this game? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I go first. Yeah, I go first. Okay. What does love mean to you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sacrifice. Uh, especially when you when you care someone uh, when you care for someone like that so much. Uh, sacrificing everything is, shows your love towards them. So that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. that? All right. <laughs> that works. All right. You and your so-and-so finish having sex. While you're washing up in the bathroom, you overhear them starting. Oh. <laughs> you overhear them starting to masturbate. What would you be your response? His face? Um, I mean, I would be upset, I think. After we had sex? Yeah. Because it's like, was the goodness? Right. Yeah, I would be pretty upset. <laughs> right. Like that. I think I would just. Wow, I never expected this question. <laughs> Um, I don't know exactly. I'd, I'd probably just like storm out there, like movie scene epically, and be like, what the hell's going on here? here? Kind of thing. Yeah. What oh, would you wow. do? <laughs> I think I'll just leave. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> I gotta leave. Yeah, yeah I would be more than that. Than that. Wow. All right. Okay. Yeah, we're going through things. What is your ultimate relationship deal breaker? Hmm. Wow. Deal breaker. Hmm. I, to, I have to say what I think about that actually, so I'm going to do the wheat grass. Oh, there you go. I see. I don't know how to open it. Oh. Just use gravity. Like that? Yeah, use gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Double shot of wheatgrass, actually. Not even shot. It's not that bad, actually. Okay. <laughs> cool. Okay. Have you ever blown up, called or texted repeatedly without getting a response to someone's phone before? So, what, what was that reason? Um, the only thing I can think of is like my friend's parents were like, so and so's missing. Have you heard of them? And then I like freaked out a little and blew them up. But she was on a date. Just had her phone off for like five hours. But that's it. <laughs> I've done it to my friends a lot when they say that, like, come hang out. I'm like, where are you at? 
five hours later, I died. I fell asleep. And I'm like, thanks. It means a lot. <laughs> yeah. But I'll say, and then my, my mom would do that to me if I was on my phone. Oh, yeah, I get blown out. My goodness. My parents are just ruthless. I don't know. 100% agree. Yeah. But I haven't, like, blown up a guy. Like, I'm not crazy about that. Okay, good. Oof. <laughs> we got that out the way. I'm I mean, sorry. I'm crazy, but I like that. <laughs> um, okay. Can you dance? If so, show me your best dance moves. <laughs> Have you seen his? No. You haven't seen his? <laughs> All right, so this so is Will Smith, and I think his name is Kevin James, right? Okay. So in the movie, he's like trying to do these dances, and so I just do it. It's like a little two step or something. You like this. That's all you do. Let's go to the rhythm. Nice. Yeah. Two, not, not, it's simple. Can story. I get a clap? Can I get some clap? It's simple. You know, you're not embarrassing yourself or your date while you're out there. <laughs> all right. Do you consider flirting while in a relationship cheating? Why or why not? Logically, I think, I don't think it's cheating. Um, especially because people can like interpret things as flirting that aren't intentionally mm -hmm. flirting. Um, but if you flirt with intention, that's cheating. I mean, it just, just depends on- Is your motive. Your motive, yeah. yeah. But if you're just like, because I'm really outgoing, so I usually am drawn to people who are outgoing, which can be perceived as flirty people, but I don't think that's cheating. Same, yeah. I, you know, they're around my head right there, I would agree. It just depends on your motive. Because you could say you're not flirting, but deep down in your mind, you know you are. So right. it just comes down to honesty and basically your intentions. I would agree with that. Nice. But describe what you need to do before you can see your partner again after an argument. Oh. With me? Yeah, I agree. Oh. You didn't answer that one. <laughs> describe what you need to do. Though. I was like waiting for you, like, come on. Um, <laughs> bef before you can see your partner again? So, like, you guys get in an argument and you leave? What do you have to do to prepare I feel to go like back into that? Leaving is kind of a trigger for me. If there's an argument, somebody leaves, and that's, that's just a line that shouldn't be crossed. Um, but I don't know, I guess like what, what I would need to do is just like meditate a little, you know, breathe it out, mm -hmm. um, try to see their perspective. Yeah, I've seen too many movies where they leave after an argument and the stage for me. Right. So. Or people die. That's a little <laughs> extreme, but okay. That's true though. Um, so like, especially with my roommates too, like when we get arguments, we don't walk away, we just sit and talk about it right there and just yeah. let it all out because then you can start building up extra emotions to that argument, which might not even be that big of a deal. You, maybe someone else just thought something different. So I'll agree with that. Walking out is kind of a bad, bad sign because like you don't want to fix it. Right. Yeah. Are we getting through this whole pile? This is nice. This is nice. I have a very few question. Pretty good. Three. Four more. I have a four more. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Tell me about a time when you broke someone's trust and what you did to get it back. <laughs> what are some beliefs or narratives that you hold about relationships? Hmm. I think going into it with trust and not letting your past affect it, because I've had roommates who've had girlfriends who they already have trust issues before even going into it. So how are you going to have a healthy relationship with no trust to start it? Um, I'll say another thing is like we said earlier about the fighting, like how do you react when negative situations happen? Do you handle it right away or do you go blow off steam using social media or like, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like, Oh, let me go post a picture real quick or let me go text one of my friends. So, 
which has happened to some of my friends. So that's why I say that because I've seen them go through that. And it's like, I don't want that. Like I want someone that's gonna squash that shit out right there and then just trust me because without trust, there's no progress. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is your attitude about change in life or in relationships? Wait, what? What is your attitude about change in life or in relationships? Yes. Explain. Is, of course, no problem. What is your attitude towards change in life in general or in relationships? What's your thoughts about it? What do you mean change in relationship? Life changes. Uh, okay, I see what he's saying. Well, how do you, how do you handle it? it? It's open ended. How do you view change? How do I view change? Um, I feel like at first I'm probably I'm a very anxious person, mm -hmm. so at first there's probably gonna be a lot of anxiety about change. But then, you know, I have like little mantras that I tell myself that are like, like one of the big ones is I'm so excited about the future that I have no room for fear. So yeah, if I repeat cool. that kind of shit to myself, it helps me be like stoked about change. So right on the wall. for the most part, yeah. I'm like pretty excited about change. I feel like, you know, all good things happened because some change occurred. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, in change in relationships, I don't know. This feels like a little too open. I kind of need an example of some sort, but. Um, mm. Okay, here's a good one. You've been dating somebody for two years and they get a job in a different city. Do you move with them or do you stay? Would that be a good one? This happened to me and I moved oh. to Virginia. So there's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, so I would move. I mean, I'm in a relationship with a team, so where do you go, I go even. Yeah. What my coach told me in basketball and college is you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because like we talked about earlier, you can be comfortable for your whole life and you won't ever progress. You won't ever be your full, your full self. So with, when life changes, you gotta be, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but you gotta just keep going. Like you said, have no fear for the future. Or there's too much future for a fear, so. Yeah. Right. Which of your dating standards are absolutely non-negotiable? Explain. Dating standards. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe like, Actually, that's a pretty open, broad question. Um, like something like if someone does something, you like, it doesn't matter. It's like a deal breaker. Deal breakers, yes. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm picky, there's a couple. <laughs> but, I feel like a big, a big one is, um, like any sort of controlling behavior, mm -hmm. especially early on. Yeah. If there's any like hesitation about me hanging out with like family or friends or doing something like this, um, well, I guess this would piss off a partner. No. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, you know, just like projects or, or things with friends or, or uh, vacations, because I travel a lot with friends. And so mm -hmm. if there's like any sort of controlling energy then usually out. Yeah. I would say how they sacrifice their time for me. So like let me explain that. So yeah. like I said earlier, when you care about somebody, when you love somebody, it's all about sacrifice. So yeah, you can go on your trips, but just if even if it's just one day a week, that's what I'm kind of picturing in my head, like whenever I get in a relationship with somebody, life's busy. Mm -hmm. But if I've seen multiple times with mentors movies like just pick one day a week and just that's the day you guys hang out and for me it's like if you want to hang out too much too especially like in the beginning because it's like okay what else are you doing with your life like, <laughs> you've been at my house for three days <laughs> yeah like don't you have goals exactly don't you work are you focusing on a career just stuff like that so uh when i date somebody i want to i can see myself like potentially the future with them. So someone who doesn't want kids, is, that's pretty big, but oh. definitely, I mean, I obviously would want to hear their explanation for it, but I just see myself with a family. So that yeah, would be- Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That would be non-negotiable. But women, we feel like, even if men say they don't want kids, they're still gonna 
change their minds, which doesn't happen. Yeah. But um, but no, I totally agree. That is a deal breaker. Okay. One more one. One more to go. Describe a time when you settled for less than you deserved. What did you learn? Hmm. I would say my whole basketball career in college, um, I made the team. I ended up playing four years, but I never fully got to my potential because I didn't work out a lot. And so I look back now and I'm like, where I could have been. And um, that could connect with how school was for me too. Like I was just doing the bare minimum. And so I was settling for sports and education just because I was there. And so I look back now, it's like, what could have been if I actually tried a lot harder? And so that helps focus my mindset today. It's like, okay, I need to be my full self. Like I need to get that potential there and not just let it sit. So I'll say that, and that definitely helped me now, now that I'm working full time, basically an adult now, it's like, wow, like I'm actually basically. thankful for that. I'm thankful for that experience because to be 25 and have a career, I mean, some people can say that, some people can't. And I feel like me going through that so early is to help out other people that I influence. So, yeah. Yeah, happy story. Yeah, what about you? A time I settled for less than I deserved. This is actually pretty good. I'm take some <laughs> it kind of gave me a weird buzz feeling. Did it not for you? Am I tripping? Like I felt a little in my head. Um... <laughs> Describe a time when you settled for less. Um, uh, probably like I, I was heartbroken. Um, like I got out of my longest relationship and then I got like straight into one. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty heartbroken about that when that one ended. And so I like rebounded pretty, pretty much right after that. And I think that was a time I settled for less than I deserved because the person I rebounded off of or with um was just like I was it was it's just a moment where you like reflect and you're like what the hell am I doing like mm -hmm. there's no goals there's no future but I'm just like sad so this is how I keep from being sad um so yeah maybe I deserved it in the moment for being you know shitty to, to my ex but but I grew, and, and he's a great person, and we are actually good friends now. But um, but I was like, I don't even know where I'm going with this story. But basically, <laughs> I was I was kind of like just being what I didn't deserve to myself in some of the decisions I was making. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, settling for, for someone I didn't deserve, mostly just because of like, you know their habits and their goals and them not them being like unhealthy i mean did they know that you were i mean your ex did he know that you just broke up with somebody the rebound yeah yeah he knew. i was very honest i was like i'm still sad about this and so, he's... so <laughs> everyone knew what was going on but yeah it was it was a it was a hard lesson like I said, we're, we're cool now and we're both happier. And so, he's dating someone and I'm still single. <laughs> so. I, I hope. I mean, you're here. So. <laughs> yeah. There we go. You said you're 25. Yeah. I'm 22. Do you know who Michael Jordan is? You do? Okay. Because I had a friend. It was the like 23rd <laughs> birthday. And I said, it's your Jordan year. And they said, who is that? Oh. I did have to ask, is Jordan year 23, though? I remember when I turned 23. I was like, is that my Jordan year? Yeah. <laughs> you get a pass. You get a pass. Okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think it was good. Um, I like the games a lot because we didn't really do a lot of those grass wheat shots. So we both were pretty open about answering each question. Do you feel like the questions you, that you answered before and helped you on your date? I think so. I think it gave her a little bit of a perspective before she walked in here. Do you feel like you knew who you're dealing with? Pretty, yeah, pretty well. Elaborate. <laughs> Based on her answers to her questions and her being open to answer those questions, I have a pretty good mindset of what I think who she is as a person. Okay. 
Um, you want a little second date? Yeah. Okay. Why not? I don't know. How was your experience? On a blind date? Um, yes. So interesting because there's people in the room. And yeah, it was just an experience I've, like, I've never had before. But um, overall, the energy it was really positive and fun. And, you know, I could come back and do it again. It was fun. Do you feel the questions you picked helped you on your date? Um, I feel like, yeah, I feel like they could have um, if they were, like, more, more thought out. Not the question, but the answer. You mean his answers? His answers, yeah. They weren't too, they were kind of elusive. Would you agree? <laughs> I got, I have a nod back there. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping the laughs. Anywho, um, like I wrote a fucking essay. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when in terms of second date, would you give Cody a second date? Um, no. All right. I would go. I would hang out with him. But that's how I am when I date, is I just want to hang out as friends and see how that goes. So I would hang out with him as a friend with no like romantic emphasis, you know, but my eyes were, or would be open oh, okay. to see if anything sprouts. But, but romantically, no, I wouldn't go on another date. Well, thank you. Did that make any sense yes. to anyone? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, that is Hey, it's Rob, the Real Life Hitch. If you want to spice up your date night, please get Let's Talk Dating Edition. Now, I've gone through these cards. If you want to talk about masturbation, maybe potentially if you love your grandma, or if you will pay a prenup, please buy this deck. You will not have a dull moment. And yes, I said masturbation. Oh.